Square Enix has got a ton of cool Dragon Quest games on the way. Sega is finding lots of fun ways to celebrate Sonic's 30th anniversary. And right now, we're gonna check out the Horizon Forbidden West state of play. All that and the latest at everything cool today in the Rundown. Hey, welcome to the Rundown. My name is Victor Lucas, and I am so happy that you can join me today. It's a special Rundown. All kinds of news happening today on this uh, Thursday, May 27th. We've already had some pretty big reveals in the worlds of Dragon Quest and Sonic the Hedgehog. We're going to get to that in a little bit. But first, I have to tell you that this Rundown is brought to you by our friends at the Gaming Stadium. They are Canada's leader in online esports tournament facilitation. They've got tournaments happening every weekend that you don't want to miss out on you can join up with them at tgs.gg and today's episode is dedicated to our buddy vague zone podcast who said i think an inexpensive streaming handheld is the way to go play triple a pc games with a wi-fi connection which sounds really good to me this is uh the idea behind the uh, steam pal the valve steam pal that's sort of percolating in the news right now there's some other handheld information that's uh, percolating in the news right now we're going to get into that in the rundown as well but we're going to get started uh first of all with a live stream of the uh, Sony State of Play, which today is dedicated to Horizon uh, uh, Forbidden West, and uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Sam, I am one one says thank you, Gaming Stadium. I think that's fantastic. Um, Jose Sanchez is here. That's awesome. Uh, good to see you. And uh, Jordan Cunningham, it's good to see you. Shadow Mist, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here today. Alpha Cast is here. Thank you for the little bit of the wait. I wanted to give people a little bit of time to get into the room here. Um, so we're going to go right from the live show, and I'll, I'll uh, live react along with you guys and read some of the comments as we go along. Hip Hop Dan, this was a little bit of an early one. Good to see you, C. C Smith and Randall Hyatt and uh, Neo Geo King and Joe Nadeau. Uh, and thank you all for noticing uh, Baron Zemo doing a little bit of dancing. I was actually thinking maybe I should, you know, shoot myself in front of a green screen or something like that and do some dance moves as the music is kind of building in that piece. I like that that piece of music that I pulled for the, obviously for the, uh, let's, let's wait screen. Um, uh, and then the Baron Zemo, uh, imagery and the, and the video that Marvel, uh, cut together of him dancing for an hour came into all of our lives. And I said, you know what? That is perfect. So I squished him down into a little corner and I love that people, uh, are picking up on that and noticing that, uh, Jose, it's really good to see you. I just saw your pics, uh, with your baby today, um, doing some cherry picking and stuff with the, with the family. Beautiful, buddy. Need to have you on the show very soon, my friend. Uh, 300 plus tax is too much for Intellivision Amico. Let Tommy know. That's from PK. <laughs> is Tommy on this chat too? That, that would be hilarious. Got a rundown dedication. Awesome. Vague Zone podcast. It's awesome that you're here on all the time, my friend. Thank you for being here. And Paul Adamson, good to see you. Uh, and he says, EP Live, always a good hang. Spidey82 says, what's up? What's up to you? Uh, are you showing the state of play video? I am. And uh, you know what? It's almost time. So let's pop over to uh, our first story, which is Sony state of play on Horizon Forbidden West. Okay, so um, we're just going to chat along with this. I'm going to put my headphones in, and uh, it, we're about to go live. It's uh, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is when they're supposed to go live with uh, this. So uh, let us jump in. Let's listen together. And um, I'm going to pop the audio up. Hopefully it's not too loud. I will ride the audio because just in case they throw in some licensed music, which sometimes some of these um, uh, events, these digital events... Uh, do from time to time so we'll see level 857 good to see you what's good Vic I've been loving the Sega news lately yeah we are getting kind of spoiled um, it must be E3 time or something right it's uh, it's getting surreal um, if if he was here we'd know what's in his pants hip-hop Dan said about Tommy <laughs> all right uh, <laughs> let me know man I ain't doing uh, well, I'm not going to swear on the podcast today uh, or on the show today, uh, but that is cool, my friend. We are going to get you in. Actually, uh, if if you've got time, we'll do this live right now, buddy. Um, what, what do you say about uh, recapping the news tomorrow live, you and me, uh, at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific? You want to do that tomorrow, Jose? 
We'll just go over some of the big reveals of this last week, talk a little bit about what we're expecting out of E3. Let me know in the chat below, and then and then uh, I'll have you on the show tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think I've ever booked a guest in the live chat before. <laughs> Uh, First Horizon was fun, but I wasn't that wild about it. However, I'm really needing some new stuff to fully enjoy my PlayStation 5. I think you need to go back to that incredible game, Vague Zone. Uh, it gets better and better and better. All right, Jose is my guest tomorrow. We're going to do a live rundown, kind of Vic's Basement uh, recap tomorrow, which I think I'm going to start doing a little bit more of on Fridays because so much stuff is happening, and I want to be able to bounce off uh, of uh, guests and talk about some of that stuff. So Foobs is my guest tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. But let's get uh, let's get started here with the Horizon Forbidden West state of play. Very stylish. They had like five hours of uh, pre-show. You guys thought my 15 minutes was long. All right, here we go. Peter Kokasar, good to see you. Louis Arias, not a fan Hi, of the, the Sonic reveals. I'm the game director on Horizon <clears throat> Forbidden West. Last year, we revealed our ambitious new project, and since then, the team has continued to make great progress on the development of the game. We are very excited Fubar Fridays. and honored to give you an update <laughs> in this state of play. And in the countdown video leading up to this moment, you have already seen glimpses of the Forbidden West. But now we have something truly special for you. Almost 14 minutes of gameplay captured on PlayStation 5. And you don't have to wait any minutes of gameplay captured on PlayStation 5. Yeah, they had and to catch up on the sync there. I just noticed that. Get right to it. All right, here we go. Did he say 14 minutes or 40 minutes? <laughs> Because that's a big difference. Easy, easy. It's okay. You're safe now. This is generation where we're not going to be able to tell what's cutscene, what's gameplay. Wait, what happened? Where's Erend? Ambush. Ruins are crawling with raiders. They hit our camp hard. We ran and they chased us down. Something went down here. He said full playthrough. <laughs> Louis Arias. Still out there. What was that? Raiders got machines on their side. Oh, they will, Vig Zone. Dual Sense is such a huge selling point for the PlayStation 5. All first parties probably are probably uh, uh, strongly encouraged to do the best that they can with it. Okay. Aloy, right? That's her name. Oh, I, th I felt like grabbing the controller. How weird. I thought I was in a let's play right now. That was surreal. <laughs> uh, their volume is low. Or the uh, the stream volume is low for, from them. I'll boost it up a little bit. Let me know how the balance is, you guys. Rundown is it, it's live. It's ongoing. This is a live... Recap as we go, pathetic Earthling. So we are in. Uh, oh. and we are in uh, a new environment, much less foreboding than the uh, treacherous environments of the first game. Except, of course, we have tropical-looking machines. Aloy looks incredible, right? I'm with you on that one, Kung Fu Hot Dog. That is such a fantastic um, screen name, by the way. Raiders. Everybody's a lot more decorative on this side of the world. Uh, let me know how the balance is. It looks like it's a little bit hot for me, or for the uh, the um, gameplay footage. Be careful. There might be more. 
We need some Lance Reddick in this stream. You got that right, John. Yep, another one. Love that actor. I need to get clear. Oh, that's cool. That was close. Was that sand that she kicked off, or was that a bomb that she dropped, or like a smoke grenade or something? I can't shake Such a badass. Taking on robot dinosaurs. Pocket sand, Nick Seabright says. Game is gorgeous. I think we'll get release date today, yeah? And special edition info, I'm sure. Whoa, man. That is gorgeous. <laughs> Blair Farrell, Blair Farrell uh, Aloy picked up some uh, Batman smoke pellets from Arkham. Holy crap, man. I want to vacation here. I guess we will this year. It's like going to Australia, right? Everything's out to kill you in this world. This is some next-gen graphics right here. Yeah, absolutely. Strong here. It still seems so effortless. We have not begun to see the full power of the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. <laughs> this is exactly like Australia, right? Vague Zone Podcast? I've been to Brisbane and uh, Sydney, and both cities are incredible. Friends, okay? Love it down there. They're not just the ones you slaughtered. Oh, that guy. I forget his name. When they come looking for me, there's gonna be Looks like trouble. a hockey player. Trouble. <laughs> Oh boy. It's so cool, like this, the, oh man, the fusion of uh, robotic machinery and then like sticks and wood and, and cloth to kind of fuse it all together. <laughs> level, level 857, all of my impressions sound a bit like Sean Connery. I just, I just did it for my neighbors. We were walking down the street, and, and he said he was working on his Michael Caine, and, he, and so he did it, and then I, I did Sean Connery, and his eyes went, well, that's pretty good. I was like, again, I want to pick up the controller and play. This is surreal. Oh, John, I wouldn't put it past Sony for this. Everything's in engine, uh, Lewis Arius. That's why it seamlessly flows back and forth, right? Loading is quickly becoming a thing of the past. Then we'll head for the old bridge and meet up with the others. Will do. Yeah, got it. This must be Aaron's camp. Raiders made short work of it. Filthy Osiram. Ah, oh, EK, thanks for watching for 20 years, my friend. Thank you. It is my pleasure. I I love that I get to do this. There would still be kind of a jerk in between the cutscenes and the action, and I think that's what the devs and, and the hardware teams are trying to completely change Vague Zone. They want uh, they want it to be super smooth, going from one end to the other. You think you can hurt me? Right, like that. Yeah, I do. And sports games are going to take advantage of that in a big way, I think. Wow. All right, back 
to the hunt. Of the next Tony Hawk game, Lewis Arias. I was just thinking about what Spider-Man for real on PlayStation 5 is going to look like. It's going to be crazy. Uh, best back, best backing tracks. Johnny and I are talking about it. Um, I think we'd both love to do that. But of course, you know, we need the time and we need to be safe. It looks pretty ready, doesn't it, uh, Chris? Chris Stanika? There's the bridge. It looks like it's done. I think I know a way to get there fast. <laughs> Shadow Mist 1, we're back in original Nintendo loading times. Could you imagine going back to 1986 or 87? with a PlayStation 5, <laughs> plugging it into a TV. <laughs> Something like this. Movies didn't even look this good. Well, there weren't any. We were like three years out from Tron. That should do it. This is so dope. Oh my god. Like a on the way, ostrich dinosaur robot thing here. <laughs> Nodding 56. That's a Netflix movie. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Gotta find an adapter. True, Sam. I am 111. Hey, Lloyd. What if we find out all, and this is totally off topic, but what if we find out all those UFOs that the uh, government is going to start revealing um, are just us from the future with time travel equipment? On today's to-do list, fight a giant armored elephant robot <laughs> with lasers in its tusks. <laughs> Must be fun to design stuff for this franchise. I did just write the Tomorrow War, didn't I? Except there are, there's an alien invasion. I, I want to see that movie. It looks cool to me. Time to head back. A little cheese ball, but it's, it's hard to make these sci-fi concepts not have some cheese in them, you know? Oh, man. That, this is insane. Now I'm free. Laser tusks. Activate. level of destruction. This is only like five minutes in. What else are we going to see? Wow. Hey, Lord. Glad to see me. Now you bet. Anybody humming the theme music from Moana right now? One of the Moana songs? You're welcome. Well, this time, I have a present for you. I found it, Emily. Huh? What'd you send me for? Right before the Raiders got me. You did good. Now, let's see where this thing will take us. 
Wow. This is so epic. You just know Sony's carving out the plans for this as a feature film franchise. Definitely, it's going to be happening. You always said a storm was Emily Blunt as Aloy. Was that 14 minutes? Well, that flew by. That looks amazing. Shadow of the Colossus theme, Blair Farrell. So there you have it. The first gameplay footage from Horizon Forbidden West running on PlayStation 5. We hope you are as excited about it as we are. We are. Hologram developer. <laughs> that was cool. While we have you here, we would like to spotlight some of the new elements you have just seen in our gameplay capture. Okay. And to help with that, please welcome Ben McCaw, Narrative Director on Horizon Forbidden West. Thanks, Matthijs, and hello to all our viewers. Horizon Forbidden West is set a thousand years in Earth's future after a global catastrophe. People live on in primitive tribes, but they're no longer the dominant species. Giant, animal-like Karen Gillen is Aloy. There the you go, Lewis Arias. They're extremely dangerous. Oh yeah, Machines Oasis Beyond. It's always a little bit of smoke and mirrors, for sure. We know that. A strange Everybody here knows that. Spreading across the land, and it won't be long uh, before it strangles sing all life. A, a Aloy, hero, says maneuvering like Attack on Titan there life. for a bit. But to do that, she and her companions will have to comb through the ruins of the old world to find the technology they need. Insane. In this quest, Aloy has sent her loyal friend Erend into the remains of San Arend. Francisco to right. find a crucial piece of technology. Erend encounters raiders from a rebel faction of the Tanakh tribe. They are vicious fighters, but even worse, they've acquired the power to override machines. To rescue Erend, Aloy winds up fighting them. But first, she must cross the ruins. Uh, we were just talking team. about that, best backing tracks. We face a lot of obstacles as we traverse the ruins of San Francisco. To overcome them, we've given Aloy some great new tools. It's Using a warmed scanner, San Francisco, can clearly. Spots that allow free climbing anywhere Climate in the open change. World. The free climbing now. Speeds up climbing and can get you quickly out of trouble. Mm. That was one of the things that um, the wing allows you to safely when we did the comparison between this and Breath of the Wild, the that was one of the things that um, was With a little bit frustrating while playing this after playing Breath of the Wild. And take your time to plan a path well, the around original. the previous machines, or boost through strong underwater currents. And to speed up overland travel, a variety of machines can be overridden and used as mounts or in combat. Combat in Horizon Forbidden West puts a strong emphasis on tactics and player choice. For close range combat, the spear is an excellent option. There's a range of combos that have different uses and effects. Valor Surges add a unique set of special abilities, one of which can be used to knock back nearby enemies. The spear can be charged to create a high damage effect that can take down even the stronger enemies. A wide hmm. array of different weapons is quickly accessible. Find a commando the vibes, weapon. Lewis Arias. A slingshot with adhesive grenades to temporarily stall machines. Bows with arrows that can strip armor and expose weak spots. A powerful launcher that fires spikes that explode on impact. Would Smoke still wanted this as a PS4 game, enemies. or you wanted the, or you, you wanted, wanted to see the PS4 so in machines. comparison to the PS5. The full game has many more unique weapons, and each of them can be upgraded on a workbench. But more on that another time. Another time. We the are a ways away from this, I think. I don't know about November. Options we have shown to deal with a large variety of deadly machines. It's certainly not in summer. The sky, claw striders and tremor tusks on land. Step moss in the water. Even the seemingly harmless burrowers that you saw briefly swim might by, be next year. they are all dangerous, and even more so when overridden by human rebels. We've only scratched the surface of the rebel threat, as Aloy will fight them in many forms throughout the game. And to defeat them, she must explore the open world to uncover the secret behind their power, and how that secret is related to her quest to stop the blight. And this is just one of the mysteries she will unravel as her journey through the uh, forbidden John's still not seeing Lance Reddick anywhere. In terms. It's time to wrap it up. We will have more updates close to launch, and everyone here at Guerrilla can't wait for you to experience the full game. Thank you for watching. No launch info. Yeah, we're a ways away. I don't know if this is 
I don't think this is this year. Because we, we saw a nice chunk there, but we didn't see the uh, entirety of the map, you know? So um, I'm just going to turn that off. We, so we didn't see the entirety of the map, and we didn't really get a sense of the amount of, um, you know, area that we're going to go and play in. And so it's uh, it felt as Oasis Beyond kind of... Um, projected there in the chat as they mentioned it felt very contained and controlled and um tuned for us to go wow and that i mean that's what this video release is meant to do and it did all that i mean the game looks absolutely stunningly beautiful uh but we don't really see the extent of the journey that aloy is about to go on so i think we've got a little bit of a ways to go before we um we really know when this is coming out. They're obviously planning another one or two state of plays, but it's far into development, and uh, there's a lot of really incredible granular detail that's already in the game. Can't wait for that title, uh, and it's definitely one of the most important games coming to um, the PlayStation 5 for sure. Now, we've also had a couple of other uh, pretty cool announcements happen in the last 24 hours or so. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the world of Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest is celebrating 35 years this year, and they had a, a 35th anniversary event, and it was very stylish and very cool. They had a host kind of uh, surrounded by all kinds of tchotchkes and memorabilia, and they took us sort of into the history, into the story, into the significance of Dragon Quest. Um, we had developers up on stage unveiling banners and showing off, uh, you know, the the cultural adoration that exists, especially in Japan, for this long-running franchise. And then they showed off a few games, for sure. Um, there's, I think, about six big reveals that they showed off, and the games themselves sort of uh, come in various sort of wow sizes, you know? The one that um, I think was probably the smallest in scale is this eraser-style game. Ken uh, I think it's called uh, Kenshi... Kenshi Kenshi, oh, Keshi Keshi, where it's a puzzle game. It's kind of like a match three type of a, a, a idea uh, where you can erase some of the enemies, just like you would erase lines in any kind of gravity puzzle out there. Um, and it looks cute. It's certainly, you know, playing on the fundamentals of the character designs that Dragon Quest is famous for. I love all of these beautiful, cartoony character ideas. Clearly, there's going to be a huge market for actual physical Dragon Quest erasers if there already isn't. Um, but this will be a great big way um, to, uh, you know, market that idea as a physical concept and people will be picking these things up all over the place. Um, but it does look cute. It does look super colorful, probably very addictive. And if you're a fan of the Dragon Quest franchise, you're probably all in for something like that. Um, but of course, that's not the, uh, you know, it's probably not, probably not the most exciting of the announcements from the Dragon Quest, uh, Quest event. They had uh, something that's kind of Japanese focused only. They showed off uh, more of what's coming to Dragon Quest X Online, which is an MMORPG, which is only available in Japan right now. Um, and it's a very popular franchise, very popular game. Uh, and they've added more story componentry to this, and it you know incorporates lots and lots of character designs from eras of Dragon Quest. They also introduced a little bit of Dragon Quest Offline, um, and this one has a kind of different kind of camera perspective to it. Uh, I believe it takes, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's a top-down version of Dragon Quest X, and you don't need to be online clearly to play this game with lots of you know cutesy, big-headed characters and crazy monster constructs. That looks super cool. The game that had me the most excited out of the reveal, though, is the idea of bringing back Dragon Quest III, which has been remade in the past. It's a very successful, very popular uh, version of the Dragon Quest games, but they're using uh, the Octopath Traveler kind of aesthetic or the uh, um, the triangle, uh, the Project Triangle kind of look to it. And they're calling it HD 2D, and um, it's such a cool-looking storybook kind of idea and this is such a beloved story in the Dragon Quest franchise. And I have to admit, I didn't play it when it originally came out. I think I've checked it out. There was a Switch download that... Um uh, or a Switch version of the game, which I had checked out for a little bit, but I didn't 
stay with it long enough that I could come back and report on it. But this new variation of Dragon Quest Three is right up my alley. This looks amazing. It's like a celebration of the old, but definitely crafted for modern tastes and modern players. So I can't wait to try this game again in this new form. I love this aesthetic. When I played uh, Octopath Traveler, it completely took my breath away. So it's very cool to see that more stuff like that is coming down the pipeline. And I think Dragon Quest is a great fit for that. Um, we also saw a little bit of Dragon Quest Treasures, which is a new kind of role-playing experience. They are um, uh, trying, you, you know, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, obviously collect all kinds of treasure and stuff, and you're using characters from Dragon Quest XI. Um, but it's going to, what they're promising is that this has got slightly different gameplay than a lot of what we know from the Dragon Quest RPGs. So don't really get too much of the gameplay here. We just kind of get this flash on where we're going with it. I like this idea that you can hover with the bat. And of course, they're going to show off some treasure chests because it's called Treasures. Uh, but I think the big announcement, and it wasn't a huge reveal, is that Dragon Quest Twelve is in development. It is called The Flames of Fate, and they have a pretty snazzy-looking logo piece here. Um, but we don't really know much more, except that it's going to be coming uh, as a worldwide release and on all kinds of different platforms uh, next year. So it's likely one of the most ambitious in, in the entirety of the Dragon Quest experiences. But Dragon Quest XI was so well received, and then the um, the upgraded Dragon Quest XI was so well received, an exceptional JRPG, that uh, I think a lot of expectation, a lot of hope uh, is placed upon this game to be the biggest in the uh, franchise ever. Um, but we've got a while to wait to see that one, to play that one, and then eventually to get it into our homes. But um, that was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool celebration. What I liked about it all was the, uh, you know, just the joy that everybody had on their face kind of celebrating the many years and the many iterations of Dragon Quest. I like the, you know, the the set that they had. I like the energy coming off of uh, the hosts and all of the developers that were popped up on screen. And then they had a recap showing all of the big announcements on there. That was cool. Um, and But I have to admit, I'm not like the, the world's expert leading expert on Dragon Quest stuff. I think Johnny Millennium probably takes the uh, uh, takes that title. Uh, but I am a fan, and I am looking forward to that Dragon Quest uh, goodness that's coming down the pipe. There's also some Sonic the Hedgehog stuff headed our way, and they also had an event celebrating 30 years of Sonic the Hedgehog, and they had uh, brand you know executives and uh, the, the creative officer at, for Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Izuka-san, and... Um, they took us into a bunch of different ideas to help celebrate Sonic the Hedgehog in its 30 uh, years of uh, uh, entertaining fans out there. And I can still remember the first Sonic experience, bringing that home and playing it with uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, and, and a bunch of other friends that we cohabitated with. And we were just absolutely blown away by the cartoony you know, joy of the original Sonic the Hedgehog experience. So they're going to be celebrating um, with a live free concert. And I think it's part of uh, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest. Um, it's going to be coming up later this year. So you can w watch an orchestra and there's also rock music in there and there's going to be a DJ playing some stuff. Uh, so it, it's going to be a, a celebration of Sonic music through the ages, which I think is a pretty cool way um, to bring us all together around Sonic the Hedgehog. I think that's pretty cool. That was a nice way to start off the uh, the presentation with. But then they dug into some of the games, and what they're doing with Sonic the Hedgehog this year is not just, um, you know, bringing out some new experiences, and I think some would say they're not bringing out enough new experiences, but they are incorporating Sonic the Hedgehog in some interesting ways. At first, when I saw this, I thought it was video. I thought it was uh, Sonic mascot running in with real athletes because the visuals are starting to look so good. And then you realize, no, this is the, the new Olympics game that uh, Sega has had the license to for a long time based on the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Is is that happening? Is Are the Olympics happening this year? I don't even know. Uh, I think it's still up in the air. But Sonic the Hedgehog will be 
a, a playable element um, in the uh, the 2020 Olympics game from Sega, which I think is just nuts. It just looks so surreal. The guy in the mascot suit running and uh, and leaping and uh, you know boxing. It's just crazy. Uh, this one was pretty interesting to me, though. Two Point Hospital is a terrific hospital simulation with a really cheeky sense of humor. It's almost like Wallace and Gromit are running a hospital, but now you can throw in Sonic the Hedgehog, and this is a free update. So there's Sonic and Knuckles and other characters. There's little Sega arcade machines. Um, this is a really cool game. I reviewed it, and my review's on the channel if you wanted to check it out, but I really dug it. It's a lot. There's a lot of depth and a lot of interesting detail and, and the way that you're kind of assessed uh, on your profitability and your care of the people. It's a very cool experience. So it's going to be surreal to play that with Sonic the Hedgehog walking around. And then the other game that they uh, wanted to highlight in this little video is Lost Judgment, which is coming out this fall which is the sequel to Judgment, which just re released, is going to have Sonic Fighters, which I guess it was an arcade game. I think I remember playing that on the Saturn, but you're going to be able to go into the Sega arcades and walk up to a machine and play Sonic the Fighters, which is crazy. I, I think this is, uh, is pre-Smash Brothers. Pretty sure it is. You guys will tell me in the comments below. Uh, and then um, there's also going to be a very hotly anticipated um, and expected remake of Sonic Colors. It's called Sonic Colors Ultimate. They had an enhanced version of the original trailer in there, and obviously everything has been kind of re-rendered and beautified. Uh, and it looks like a lot of fun. Like when I see this trailer, I really want to go back and load up my Sonic Colors. Uh, I think it was out in the Wii. I want to play it again. I want to dive back into this world. I haven't always been a huge fan of Sonic in 3D because he moves so quickly that it's difficult to kind of know what the hell is going on. But I think this game, if I can recall, did a, probably the best job at harnessing all of the power and fury of the character and still keep it sane. Uh, and there's lots of great interactions with all of the other Sonic characters and stuff in here as well. It's super colorful. I think a lot of people are going to be delighted that this game is coming back. Um, and I think it's going it's a nice way to celebrate the 30th anniversary. I'll tell you the, the game that I really wish was coming back this year. Um, well, I, w I wish that there was a Sonic Mania 2 or something uh, in that vein. I mean, they've got the Sonic Origins collection coming out. And it's going to be on a bunch of different platforms. There's going to be new ways to access classic Sonic games, which is good. But I love Sonic uh, um, and All-Stars Racing Transformed. I think I have all the words in there. That game is incredible. I recently downloaded it to the Xbox Series X, and it's the Xbox 360 game, which isn't super low resolution, doesn't run at a fast frame rate. That is just begging to be um, remastered and fleshed out to run at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second with all of the different craft and all of the different abilities you can fly and you can you know race on the water all of those characters all of that amazing music from all of the Sega eras that is a game I would have loved to have seen in today's show we didn't get that though uh, we did see that Roger Craig Smith is coming back to voice Sonic, and that was uh, revealed and unve unveiled yesterday, I think, when I was doing the live rundown. Um, people were talking about that in the chat. So he's coming back, and one of the first things that he's going to be doing is an animated series, um, and they teased a, a little bit of it. They showed it's called the uh, uh, Sonic Color. It's, again, tied to the Sonic Colors franchise, and they showed off a little kind of teaser taste of this new animated show. Um, which, you know, it's, uh, it, it looks pretty cool. And I think it's, I think it's going to be available everywhere. I've got a little tiny t bit of it right here. So uh, it doesn't look like the, the, like the highest definition or the highest resolution or the, the, the best animation that we have ever seen out there. But, you know, clearly it's a nice collection of all of the Sonic characters that we love. I'm just happy for Roger Craig Smith to be back because he's amazing. Um, and he's also, I think, the voice of the, the main character in Dying Light 2, which we're going to be talking about here in a second. Uh, but the big, I, I think, reveal of uh, the Sega event was when uh, the executives got together again to kind of tease that something big is on the way. And I don't even know what this is called. I know that there's probably some Sonic, you know, diehards out there that um, know all of... Uh, 
uh, you know, the details around the Sonic lore and can piece all of these puzzles together. Uh, I thought it might have been a little teaser for the movie, but nope, this is for a new Sonic game that's coming out in 2022 from Sonic Team. Looks like it's going to be a 3D action adventure game. And uh, and there's this this weird image, this weird, uh, uh, you know, almost like a hieroglyphic at the end there, which I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know where it's from, but uh, um, we've got some new Sonic experience to look forward to in 2022. And again, that's coming to everything out there. So uh, and what they did say, though, with the Sonic celebration is that more stuff is going to be revealed and more information is coming. We're still before Son the Summer Game Fest and we're before E3. So I expect some other big announcements to drop. And because we're in the 30th anniversary of Sonic, uh, and even Dragon Quest. I think there could still be more things that are revealed. And certainly with uh, um, uh, Zelda, we're going to get to know more, I'm sure, of some new stuff. And Metroid as well. Uh, so we've got a lot to be excited about. Um, something else that was revealed today is a new name for Dying Light 2. We um, uh, Now it's called Stay Human. We got some new gameplay as well. This game is... This was honestly one of the most exhilarating E3 demos I've ever had, and I've experienced a lot of cool ones, but you guys know the carnage in Dying Light is something to behold. I really hope no kids are watching right now, but heads go flying, and you have to be merciless in this game, and the idea, of course, is to try to stay human as long as possible. Uh, I believe it's Roger Craig Smith. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't check just before I went live with this, but I think he is playing Aiden. I believe he was the actor in the original game as well, and he's been infected, and so he's trying to fight it off for as long as he can. He's got to deal with, you know, human protagonists and zombie protagonists, and of course, this is a game that emphasizes parkour and all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, fun and insane experiences and choices. It's wide open, and what they promised with this game is, a, you know, a lot deeper and more fulfilling storytelling with some uh, really dynamic and heavy moments. And it's going to be coming out this year. They announced the release date. It's going to be coming out on December 7th. And, uh, of course, that was also coupled with all kinds of information about special um, collector's editions and, and, you know, little statues and things that you can pick up along with it. And there's also all kinds of digital incentives and stuff. So this was kind of a, a huge deal for uh, the Dying Light team because people have been waiting for this for a long time. In fact, the people have been waiting so long that they actually released a video not too long ago making fun of the comments that they've been uh, receiving. And um, so I'm looking forward to this. I don't know how you guys feel about Dying Light, the original one, but that's a game that people still are playing right now because it, it, um, it didn't have the best story, but holy crap, was it fun to play. So I can't wait to play Dying Light 2. It looks amazing. Um, and then I've got one last thing to tell you guys about. You can probably predict what it is. Uh, Bloomberg today talked about uh, Nintendo is going to be releasing this new upgraded Switch as soon as September. They said even though um, Nintendo and every other tech company is dealing with parts shortages right now, um, they are going. They're putting the plans in place to be able to have this thing on sale in September or October. So we may have a reveal for the new Nintendo Switch. I hope. They call it the Super Switch. That's still the name I'm hoping for. Um, as soon as E3, I mean, it might be in the next week or so. But the, it, you know, they are really standing by their reporting. It's everywhere, all over the internet. I saw articles in Forbes and all of the game websites out there. I'm sure it's on CNN today because this is a big deal. Like the uh, the secret is out. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time, but Blue Bloomberg has been just digging deep and deep and talking to all kinds of different sources out there. And the idea is that Nintendo is going to reveal this soon so that games that are being manufactured to take advantage of this new Switch will start to be revealed um, at uh, the Summer Game Fest and at E3 and throughout the summer. So how do you guys feel about that? You excited to pick up a new Switch? It's been four, more than four years now with the original. I am ready. I uh, I love the Switch and I play it all the time, but I certainly do notice more often that there's a little bit of slowdown, a little chunkiness with some of the games that I've been playing. So I'm looking forward to a little more horsepower. The idea is that the, the new Switch will output up to 4K resolution when it's docked and have a better screen when you're, you know, walking around with it. Um, uh, it'll be interesting how they position all of this because I believe that the Switch Lite 
becomes a very attractive second device for people that have to plunk down a little more money for this enhanced switch because it will be more expensive, probably $100 more expensive. And so that switch light, I think, really starts to look like the portable system that people pack around with. And uh, and then the switch, the super switch, is the thing that stays docked and, and um, games just run better on. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait to find out more, and I can't wait to get my hot little hands on uh, an enhanced switch. Are you kidding me? That's very exciting to me. But let me know in the comments below if you want that, if you expect it this year. Do you think Bloomberg is wrong? Uh, tell us why in the comments below. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for the rundown today. Thank you so much for joining me on this and the uh, live watch along. You guys are incredible. Thank you for your support. We will see you tomorrow with a fresh episode, and my guest will be... Jose Sanchez, and we'll talk about some of the biggest stories that have been happening all week long right here. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you soon. And until then, play forever.